Greetings, Elder Blacklight. I'm going to make a comment. I'm going to play this video. Make a, but I'm going to make a comment before I, I, you know, I play the video. The sister here, the very wise sister. The reason why, why, why I'm playing this video is because Africa is wising up. To America. Now, my uncle told me that uh, we always going to be divided against each other. I'm talking about brother against brother, sister against sister, because we still got that brown and black germ in us. Until we conquer that brown germ then we will be united because my uncle said that in the long run we're going to be arguing with each other about the round heads is wiser than the long head brothers and that reminds me of uh, the Hebrew Israelites saying that they got a, a bone to pick with the Africans and we're not brothers. And some of us say we're not brothers with the other originals, like the brown and the yellow and the red. Well, let's play this video. America right now for the US Africa Summit. Guess what, my brothers and sisters? Did you know there was no agenda? No. There was no agenda. Just come. So we can learn more from you. Or now we can continue to exploit you even better. Do you think any of those leaders would leave their countries to go meet with another leader without an agenda? It happened during President Obama's administration. It's happening again now. In not only bringing the Barbaric Kingdom together, but also the incorporating all of South Africa and, of course, indeed, the entire continent. My name is Alcana Chiongo Rikwao, born in Zimbabwe. I'm the former African Union Ambassador to the United States. Yeah. During my tenure, my mandate included mobilizing the African diaspora from all over the world. Not just continental Africans, but also African Americans, Afro Latinos, Afro Caribbeans, all people of African descent to come together to unite and participate in the building of the Africa that we want. We must be very clear as we embark on this journey of retaking our Africa back to where Africa once was. I'm talking about the Africa that was the center of the world. I'm talking about the Africa that taught us what it means. We as humanity in general, regardless of our color, what it means to be human, what it means to be civilized. I'm talking about an Africa that once was the center of the earth. The question then becomes, my brothers and sisters, what is ailing the Barbary Kingdom? What is ailing the Limpopo? What is ailing South Africa? What is ailing Africa? How did we get here? And as we move on this journey, we must understand the genesis of what, where, no matter where you meet us as a people, we are the most endangered species on earth. Be it black people in South America, go to their communities. What ails them also ails us here in Africa. Black people in America, black people in the Caribbean, the world has put a system in place 
to see to it, no matter where we are as people of African descent, we are subjected to the same pressures that is always going to be difficult for us to find ourselves having a leg up. I'm talking about the world financial systems that were created in the 1940s with the sheer understanding that their success is based on the failures of developing nations, of course, the majority are in Africa. I'm talking of world trade systems that were put in place to make sure that Africa will continue to be the provider of raw materials in order to create jobs for the Western world. I'm talking about the colonizers from the West who, as they were giving us the liberation of our countries in the 60s, that late 50s into the 60s, they simply gave us fake independence, made us believe that we are now free. But what they never gave us, which was really what really matters the most, was economic liberation. <laughs> the multinationals that existed in all of Africa prior to liberation, they have never left our beloved continent. So it is the multinationals from colonization continue to be in Africa today. So in actuality, Africa remains under economic colonization. We must understand that those multinationals continue to siphon trillions out of Africa every day, beginning with right here in Limbobo. We have our people surrounded by all these mines. Where is that money going? As we speak today, 75% of all the minerals traded at the London Stock Exchange are coming from Africa. And none of them are owned by us, Africa. That includes minerals coming from a region right here where we are standing. You fail to benefit from what belongs to you simply because of the policies that were put in place back yonder. The question is, where do we go from here? What I find most disturbing is the fact that we as Africans, we don't understand the fundamentals of what has been done to us. Allow me to highlight a few areas that I think if we are to understand why this ailing African tree of life cannot come back to life. Let's look at the issues above the ground on this tree which are the issues they want us to focus on and they never want us to look at the issues below the ground the issues above the tree above the ground we're talking about poor access to health care poor access to education poor leadership let's stop it right here for a minute see this is bigger than Tahaka Bay and Tariq Nasheed and Ye and all this beefing we're doing. Can't you see that the devil is in the mix? If y'all can't see that, I mean, common sense. Oh, I forgot. Common sense ain't so common no more. I'm black light. Telling the truth. Passing the mic with the kind of flavor that will save you. And the kind of knowledge you won't get in college. It's time to rise and shine. It's prime time. Assalamu alaikum.